Welcome to Paddlebox, and this is a slightly different episode because we have no cars, no tools, though we're not in the garage. All we have is this lovely big piece of plywood and a bunch of model trains, and that's because I'm starting a new project for the winter. Now, the big point of this model railway is something that I can do inside when it is too cold, too dark, or too wet to be working on the cars either in the garage or on the driveway, because there's no fun working when you can't feel your fingers, and there's a lot of stuff that you can't do when it's raining, like welding, painting, fitting parts. It's generally just a miserable time. So I'm looking for something to do, and inspired by a bunch of people I've been watching on YouTube that I'm sure I'll mention at some point and come back to later, I've decided to uh, dust off a very, very old hobby of mine, which is model trains. Now I have a layout at my folks, which is, about, I think, about eight foot or seven foot by four, or thereabouts, um, and I've had that since I was about five, I think, and it's actually been living in the shed for the better part of 20, 20 some odd years now. So it's a bit of a shame, but ultimately I want to start fresh on a new project. Now what I am carrying over from that model railway is all of my rolling stock, and the rolling stock that I have is, as you might expect for something that was bought at least 25 years ago, quite old. Now the other thing I want to try and get from this is expanding my skill base because I used to do a little bit of 3D modeling back on Google SketchUp but I haven't done any for quite a few years now and with the advent of 3D printers it's something I'd like to get back into. Now not only that, I also have a hatred of electronics, uh, dealing with wiring and everything like that especially on the car where it's just an unknown quantity in a lot of cases for what those wires actually do. I really need to get better at it, just handling, soldering, generally dealing with wires. And hopefully this project is going to help me deal with my electronic phobia, let's call it, and also give me an opportunity to do some more modeling uh, in CAD and 3D printing, which is all going to fold back into all of the other projects that we have going on the channel. So the plan is the videos from this project are going to drop across the whole year. It's mostly going to be built up during the winter, as you might expect, when it is too dark, too cold, and or too wet to do anything else. And we'll be dropping them across the year in amongst everything else. So if we're away filming on, a, on an event, if we go to retro rides or something like that, and we don't have something queued up, whilst we're away on that weekend, we can drop a video out from the model railway build and then come back with more cars later, because there's no way they're going anywhere. They have to be finished. I'm way too deep into those projects to take on another project. Okay, yeah, maybe I've made a critical mistake here. So before we get too stuck in, I'm just going to go through some of the stock that I already have. This is what I'm carrying over into the layout, and apparently this Class 08 will always stop on these points. And I'm just going to use it to bring in a couple of trucks. And they're a real staple. People still use these. There are kits that you can get to modify them. But weirdly, of the two that I have, they are both very different. Because this one, as you can hear, rattles along really, really badly, whereas this one runs perfectly smooth. And the reason for that is the flanges on the wheels. The flanges on these ones are actually quite small, whereas the flanges on these ones are significantly larger. And because I'm using Code 75 track, they're running across and they're hitting on all of the sleepers and the chairs as they go along. Now, the difference between Code 75 and Code 100 is basically how many thousandths of an inch tall the tracks are. So Code 100 is basically what Hornby use on their set track, everything that comes in the box, the, the standard track, basically. Um, and it is 100 thousandths of an inch tall, so it's 0 0.1 inches tall. And the Code 75 is 75 thousandths of an inch tall, so 0 0.075 of an inch. And that's the difference. It's just a slightly smaller profile rail and it just looks a little bit better. Um, some people disagree, some people still use Codes 100 and this is a really nice layout. It's completely your own preference. And in this case I've decided to go with 75 even if it's made a bit of a rod for my own back. So I'm going to have to change, if I want to use both of these wagons, one set of wheels, or rather all four sets of wheels on this one to match this. So another round of wagons that I've got from the old layout. It's a bit of a, a, a mishmash here. We've got some open wagons, some tanker wagons, and a little um, guards van at the back. Now a few of these are different. These are both Hornby ones. They're quite nice. So this is a really interesting one, this Pico. Um, this is actually an all-metal wagon. It's got metal sides, metal bottom. I don't know if it's a kit. It doesn't have any particular manufacturer markings on other than it says Pico at the bottom. But unlike some of the others, this has pivoting uh, connectors on. Whereas if you look at this ocean one, this is actually completely rock solid. 
got this really nice national benzol wagon and this SO1 as well. Now the SO1 is obviously taken a little bit of damage. You can see the straps that to hold the tank onto the, the, um, the wagon have broken even on this national benzol one. The, um, the, the, the ladders that go up the side have also broken as well. But that national benzol is a really nicely done one and I have a little um, guards van here as well from apparently the North Eastern Railway. Now I've got a couple other small carriages as well. I've got some much bigger ones, but these are just the small four-wheelers. So this one's quite interesting. This is actually a track maintenance one. It has two little uh, brushes that sit on the bottom. So when you run this round as part of a train, this should actually go around and clean the track as it goes. And this is just a small wagon. I have absolutely no idea. Sorry, a small coach. I have no idea whatsoever what livery this is. I'm sure somebody in the comments will be able to tell me. So the last set of wagons that I kept here are just pulling in. One of them seems to have derailed already, which is the Terry's Chocolate Orange van. <laughs> so I'll just park this up. So we've got a quite a few ones from Hornby here, or KP Nuts. Um, this one is a pork company. And then there's a couple of Smith ones in here. I might as well just pop them back in order. There we go. A Mighty White one. A Kit Kat one. Ooh. And a Weetabix one. Now most of these are, as I say, Hornby and they're almost all identical tooling. They all have the same ten little dots on the top except for this Mighty White one which is a different one, although it's still a Hornby. This is a Graham Farish which is really, really nice. I really like this one. This has for some reason always been one of my favourite wagons that I can remember. I found it again and went, oh yeah, that's great. That one's still there. I have no idea why. So put the Class 08 away for a while and grab out one of the other locomotives that I have. I've got a set of Pacers. Now, these were fairly, fairly well um, disliked by most people who actually had to commute on them, travel on them or anything because famously they are basically a wagon with a bus on top and that's literally it. Uh, they have no D-rings on the front to connect onto any other um, equipment. You can't actually run these, run two of these sets together, which they occasionally did, but they have this weird little connector in the middle. They're just, it's just a little push fit connector, but I believe these are individually motorized, so we'll just give them both a test. Pacer to sound absolutely horrendous as it's rolling along, so that's not really a surprise. Let's just pop this one off for a second. Yep, so they both work. Ooh. One of them seems to have suddenly started working, but there we go. And the next one down the line is an Intercity 125, and I got this as part of a set, so I got all the track with it and everything. And only one of these is powered, and I think this is the non-powered one. Uh, it has lights, but that's basically all that one has. Let's see what this one does. Hopefully, this one actually runs. There we go. That one works properly. So, let's see if we can get all of these four to pull through in one go. Just about. That actually runs surprisingly smooth, even if this, uh, this traction motor sounds a little bit agricultural. The modern units are definitely much, much nicer put together than these old motors. That said, I imagine all of the motors on all of these locos need a really good service. Let's get out what was always, fairly unsurprisingly, one of my favourite models. This is Mallard. I don't think there is anybody who is into trains that is not a fan of Mallard just because reasons. Now this one comes with a powered tender but pickups I think based on this little connection here that you have to make sure goes through properly. Let me show it over there. If this is over to one side like that the pin goes down through here it doesn't connect and you don't get any power transfer so you actually have to make sure that these hook up properly like that and that it sits down well over the pin and then you actually have an electrical connection into the tender and you get a model that works rather than an ornament. Now what's this going to do? Ooh. These points are a little bit iffy. Yeah, I think this is another one that is definitely in need of a bit of a bit of a service. Now these are these are pretty good. The the intercity ones are just pretty bare inside, so at some point I might open them up and try and do something with them. These 
actually have people inside as well. So you might be able to see in there, there's a person at the window and there's somebody sat in the third section of this carriage as well. So that's, that's pretty good. Um, particularly when you think these models are 25 to 30 years old at this point. I call that a success. So we'll just pop Mallard back over there and move on down the line. Now, this one is, I think, a full tender power. It doesn't have any pickup on the front, although, oh no, it might actually, because there is a connection. Yeah, there is a connection that goes between the two. And this one still has some pretty good detailing on it, on it as well, um, with the grab rails down the side. The ones on Mallard have come off, all on one side have come off, so I need to try and fix those. But these actually seem pretty well intact. Um, although some of the paint definitely needs touching up somehow. I'm not entirely sure how I'm going to do that, but it'll definitely look better for a bit of a clean. And then we have a couple of diesel traction units. This is a class 31. I'm going to send this down and hook it up onto a couple of coaches that I got recently. So the class 31, I think, is one of the oldest models that I have. It's definitely seen quite a bit of action over the years and it really needs a good clean but the molding is pretty good on it so i was looking around for lots of bits and pieces of track and i found somebody that had five of these what i think are mark ii coaches but i could be wrong some of them in better condition than others um, and they were a very very good price and i've only got the two intercity coaches or the three pullman ones and i fancied something just in the basic kind of blue and gray livery so i picked these ones up Unfortunately, this is the only one that absolutely works right now on the Code 75. So although you can't hear it over the slightly agricultural motor in the, uh, the Class 31, that one runs fine on this track. So some of the other coaches that I got look really nice and actually have much better paint jobs even than the Buffet one, which I've just now put away, but it works perfectly. So these ones, I really want to put new wheels on because these look really, really nice. I really like them. Um, the, the printing on them, all of the, uh, the paintwork is really nice. It just looks like a nice even matte finish. All of the um, information that's on the end of them, so like the, the serial number, so W4362 on this one, is really nicely printed. Unfortunately, it has the wrong wheel set on and they don't work on the Code 75 track. Let me just pop this on here, you can hear hits every speaker, as, uh, every speaker, every sleeper as it runs down, which is really, really frustrating. And those two coaches look really good when you pair them up with a Royal Mail van on the end. I, I think this, this little rake here looks great. Now, unfortunately, what you can't see on the other camera from that side is the real beauty of, of this particular van. There are two little doors on the side. One top that pops open that way and one on the bottom that opens, ooh, if I can make it do it right from the top, I'm just going to use the levers. So they pop open like that, which is really, really good. There we go. I've actually put it in focus now. So there are two little levers on the bottom. And when you push one, it opens one of them. When you push the other one, ooh, it opens the top. And this allows you to have, the, originally when I got this, there was a little hook that came along with it. It held the bags on. And as you would run along, there'd be something uh, on the sleepers in the middle of the track. It would open up one of the doors like that. It would pick up, scoop it, and then carry on without stopping, but pick up the mail. And obviously the one on the bottom would allow you to dispense it into a little hopper. So I'm gonna have to try and model something to make that work and then print it, which is gonna be an interesting one. And I also might look to see exactly how these were meant to be, if it had a red roof or a blue roof and possibly change it. So we'll see. Now the last of the locomotives that I have is this class 37, which is I think the oldest of all of the toolings. This one's very shiny compared to this, which is a much more matte color. If I put these side by side on the other camera, you can really see there is a noticeable difference in the finish between the two, except for this one being very, very dusty. Now, if you put them down this way and have a look at the difference in the, or the apparent difference in the tooling as well, this one seems a lot more fine detail on this class 31 compared to this class 37. And it's just the little thing is like the, the grills on this are recessed in and then they raise back up and you have the grills, whereas these ones are just raised off the front. I have no idea whether or not that's right or wrong based on the actual units but it just feels like this one is a slightly better quality casting although they are both hornbeam 
So the only other piece of stock that I'm bringing over from the old layout is this crane. Now, this is definitely not the box that it was ever meant to fit in, but you can see this is a really nice model, but I have had problems with this in the past trying to get it to work. Um, I'm not 100% sure of how this originally came um, and whether or not it's just been sort of jerry-rigged a little bit with some chain to make it lift and, and have a hook on the end or what. So at some point, I'm going to go through this much, much more in detail and actually probably weather it and or paint it, try and make it look a little bit less red because it is very, very red. So in the next episode, I'm going to go into actually making up some of the track and adding it onto this board and what the overall track plan for this board is and how hopefully I want to include this into a much bigger layout. But in the short term, I'd like to put a tail chaser that goes all the way around the outside. So I've got something in addition to a bit of a depot to play around with on the inside, I can have a train just running and running and running. Hopefully I can make that so it can just be added on and taken off again if and when this gets put into something bigger. So in the meantime, thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed me running through all of this rolling stock. There will be more car videos coming out soon. Uh, there'll be more train videos coming out soon. I'm recording these in winter and it is not looking like it's going to be anything other than cold, dark and wet for the time being. So hopefully you've enjoyed us. Do subscribe to the channel. If you'd like to support any of our projects, you can go to patreon.com slash pedalboxshow. And if you want to buy any of our t-shirts, hats, mugs, just like these ones, you can go to shop.pedalbox.show and pick up any of the merch there. Thanks very much for watching. We'll see you next time.